So calm. I think it's one of the most important and beautiful words in the world. And five years ago, my good friend Alex Chu and myself created a company. And we called it Calm. And our mission was to make the world a happier and healthier place. And one of the main ways we set about doing this is teaching the really valuable, life-changing skill of meditation. And before I dive in, I'm just curious to know how many people in the audience have tried to meditate? Oh, wow. Lots of hands. All right. How many people meditate every single day? <laughs> a couple of hands. So a little different. It's not easy. It's a very, very hard skill and habit to develop. But I want to talk about something connected to, to meditation, something that also enhances our health and happiness tremendously. And it's something that I guarantee every single person in this room does every single day. It's something that everyone on Earth does, all seven billion people. It's something that animals do, uh, the giraffe for four and a half hours a day, the uh, koala, if this will work, the koala for a decadent 18 hours a day. It is, of course, sleep. And it's incredibly important. And it, uh, so for something we spend a third of our life doing, it's amazing how little we actually know about sleep. Uh, but what's exciting is the science has been improving tremendously over the last few years. What is the purpose of dreaming? Why do we have nightmares? Why 90 minutes after going to sleep do our eyes spin back and forth rapidly? Uh, what, why do we sometimes wake up groggy when other days we wake up feeling fully energized? The mysteries of sleep are slowly being unraveled by science. And one of the really exciting things is that we're discovering that sleep is much, much more important than we originally thought. It truly is a miracle drug. When we go to sleep at night, our body repairs the damage done to it during the day. Healthy sleep reduces our risk of diabetes, of heart disease, of Alzheimer's, of depression, of obesity, of so many different ailments. But I think what is really strange is that given how important it is, why as a society are we getting less and less sleep? 40% of Americans get less than the seven to eight hours that uh, is healthy for us to, to sleep each night. And it's also bizarre, given how important it is, that people brag about how little sleep they get. It's almost a badge of honor to say you don't sleep very much, which we think is, is crazy. So many, many different reasons for that. One is that you are 11 times more likely to be involved in a car accident if you've had less than four hours sleep the night before. Even less than six hours, you're twice as likely. More deaths are caused on the roads by people falling asleep at the wheel than alcohol and drugs uh, related uh, car crashes combined. It's pretty, pretty serious. If you sleep less than six hours 40 a night consistently, you'll reduce your life expectancy by about 20 years. And so on and on, these uh, worrying facts are about sleep. So at Calm, we've been thinking about it uh, a lot. And we're fascinated by sleep. And I want to tell a little story about something that happened when we looked at our data uh, towards the end of last year. We wanted to know when people meditated. And we assumed it would be in the mornings. That's when we meditate uh, at work. We thought everyone else would do the same. But when we looked at the data by country and broke it down by time zone, we saw a massive spike every evening, about 11 o'clock. And what we realized was the people were using our meditations to help them drift off to sleep, which is great, but meditation is not designed for that. And as we dove in deeper and did a lot of surveys of our users and spoke to friends, we realized there was this massive issue in, in society, growing issue of people finding it harder and harder to switch off every evening. In the age of Netflix and iPhones in our beds and staring at laptop screens all day, we are finding it 
so tough to switch off our minds at night. And so we thought, could there be a solution to this? And again, as we looked more and more into it, we realized the whole market for sleep was massive. There are gadgets and gizmos galore to help you go to sleep. You can strap stuff to your head. You can put things under your pillow. There was a, a Kickstarter for a gravity heavy blanket uh, that raised $4 million. In overall, the falling asleep market is worth about $60 billion. And then there are sleeping pills, which many people take to help them fall asleep. And sleeping pills are not great uh, for your sleep or for your long-term health. But something like 10 million Americans take sleeping pills regularly, which uh, we stopped and we took a step back and we thought, is there a simpler solution? Is there a less complex, safer way to help people fall asleep every night? And one of the things we do at Calm is uh, we, we think about our values. Uh, beautiful, kind, inclusive, inspiring, simple, and rational. And one of my favorites is simple. I love taking complex problems and, and trying to find the most simple solution. And one way of doing that is thinking like a, a child with their wide-eyed curiosity and way of approaching things. And my niece uh, loves stories. She loves a good bedtime story. And I think we all did. And we asked ourselves, why should that stop now we're all serious and sensible and, and grown up? And so that was the, the light bulb moment where we created sleep stories. These are basically bedtime stories for grown-ups. And these are not like normal stories. There's special twists to them. We take amazing narrators. Uh, we're trying to get the voice of God, Morgan Freeman, uh, who we think would be incredible to read a bedtime story. But we mix these amazing narrators with soothingly sopor soporific voices, with music, and sound effects, and breathing exercise. And as the story goes on, the words get a little slower. The spacing between the words gets longer until you fall asleep. And why most of us struggle to get to sleep is our whirring minds. We find it so hard to switch off. So many things tumbling away up there. Why did my Instagram picture only get four likes? What, 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 what was that person meaning when they gave me that funny look? What about this phone call I haven't made in, in weeks, et cetera, et cetera. But the beauty of a story is it engages us. It takes us away, and we can't continue those whirring, crazy thoughts. And basically, when we get into bed, our active mind is, is in a beta brainwave state. And the story gently transitions us to alpha. It slows down those brainwaves. And then seamlessly, we slip into sleep, into theta state. And uh, it's been a, an amazing um, journey developing these stories. And we've learned a, a few interesting things about sleep along the way. And I want to share those with you. So we discovered that people love stories related to trains. Uh, there's been a lot of science, or some science, shown that when you rock, uh, you fall asleep much more easily. And I think babies have known that for a long time, and, and mothers. Um, but there's something about the clickety-clack of the train track that helps people drift off to sleep. This next one is our most popular story. It's called Blue Gold. It's told, narrated by Stephen Fry, who has an incredible voice. And he walks you through the sleepy villages and the lavender fields of Provence. And uh, it's almost impossible to stay awake to the very end. This is a popular story with uh, people who love 80s movies. Uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Um, the teacher from that movie, the economics teacher, has a very, very droning voice. So we got him to read Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations. And uh, again, anyone who can stay awake throughout that is, uh, is a superhuman. We launched an afternoon nap recently. Afternoon naps are very healthy. And we discovered that the optimal time to nap is 26 minutes. And uh, that's proving very, very popular. We did some surveys with our users, and we discovered that by far the hardest night of the week to fall asleep was, was Sunday, and the easiest night was Thursday. Uh, we looked across the US, and we saw when people went to sleep. And the state where people go to bed earliest is Hawaii at about 10.30 PM. 
and uh, no prizes for guessing the state where they stay up latest or the city, it's New York, Brooklyn in particular, uh, where the average bedtime is seven minutes past midnight. So there's an interesting fact. <laughs> And then we also discovered that sheep were particularly popular, something about counting sheep. So we created a sheep story and helped people drift off to sheep. We love puns that come. And this proved so popular that we decided to make a movie uh, based on sheep. We called it Barbar Land. And uh, it is an eight hour masterpiece. <laughs> it's actually the 18th longest movie in cinematic history. Um, eight hours of sheep wandering around a field, <laughs> and, and that is it. The New York Times called it the most boring movie ever made, which we were ecstatic about. So uh, we've had a lot of fun uh, with these sleep stories, and what's exciting is that they have been phenomenal. It was a bit of an experiment. We didn't know whether a few hundred or a few thousand people would listen to them. Three million people Oh, three million sleep stories are listened to now every single month. We've heard about people throwing away their sleeping pills. Uh, we've heard about kids getting great night's sleep for, for the first time in years. And this is one of my favorites, uh, a lady who wrote to us saying that sleep stories saved her marriage. Um, she used to lay awake at bed at, at night imagining creative ways to kill her husband, so <laughs> uh, to murder her husband. So fortunately, that didn't happen. So we're, we're very, very proud of that. Um, so, so yes, what, what hopefully you'll take away from this is that sleep is incredibly important to our health. And it is not, it's harder than ever to get a good night's sleep in our modern, distractive, distracted age. And sometimes the most complex problems can have the simplest solution. And it doesn't get much more simpler than listening to a soothing story to help weary minds drift off to dreamland. So I wish you all good sleep and sweet dreams. Thank you very much.